Good morning, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday's trading session, the 28th of November 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Singler, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesingler.com. You can certainly download the app by the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now um, let's, uh, let's certainly look at the Asian markets first and foremost before we start to discuss US and European session. Asian markets overnight, you had Chinese markets higher. Whilst the the Nikkei is certainly lagging or certainly weaker, uh, given the fact that uh, the USD JPY has given up the 113 handle, USD JPY and the Nikkei certainly have a positive correlation. And as we all know, when the yen goes higher, the dollar starts to move lower. Therefore, USD JPY moves lower, given the fact that CHF and yen are obviously um, risk currencies. Okay, and that generally signifies risk aversion or not. So, if we bring up the chart of USD JPY, just give you a, a quick insight here especially with regards to the US dollar topping out as well. Quickly go to a 60-minute uh, chart. You can see that we had this potential HNS formation, which I was uh, obviously been charting, and you can see that the HNS certainly played out down to 111 from a pivot top of 113 or 114. So the Nikkei is certainly uh, hurting with regards to a stronger yen, but the Chinese market certainly did finish higher with the Shanghai up 0.4 and the Hang Seng up 0.4 as well, percentage. Okay, now in terms of uh, the fundamental driving forces this morning in Europe, uh, regardless of what happened in Asia overnight, uh, we have OPEC failure. So the Saudis now talking down the potential OPEC cut, not attending a meeting. The Russians certainly um, uh, sending mixed messages. Okay, the Iranians, no nothing, no news there in terms of no, no firm commitment there at all. So it certainly seems that the OPEC are in disarray. And with the OPEC being in disarray, it's generally negative for oil. And as you can see here, oil price is down. Uh, let's just bring up the price of oil for you, folks. There we go. Okay, so you can see oil price hit a pivot high of uh, $49 last week. And now we're reversing back to potential support of 45 Okay, so the uh, Saudis certainly flushed the uh, oil market. And you can see that that obviously has represented itself in risk with the FTSE 100 diving. Okay, so we're bringing up the chart of the FTSE 100 on a 10-minute chart. You can see that the pivot high... There on Friday was around 6850, and then we went as low as 6770. So down almost 70, 80 points uh, this morning on the FTSE 100, just solely due to oil. Okay, now that's one factor. Okay, so you have OPEC in disarray being one fundamental factor. The other fundamental factor is Italian banks. Italian banks certainly being punished. Okay, if I can bring up the FTSE MIB, let me just bring quickly bring up the FTSE MIB here. I don't have that chart here. Bear with me. FTSE MIB. Okay, okay. Bear with me. Should have this already. Uh, also, it uh, banks Italian. FTSE Italia Banke. There we go. Okay, so I, I need to save these two charts now for my analysis going forward because they are quite important. Okay, so bear with me. Let me just drag this back up here and this one as well. So first of all, this is the Italian uh, banking sector. Okay, if you look at the weekly chart, it's been flushed constantly. Uh, you can see the pivot high here down to uh, seven thousand. So from nineteen thousand down to seven thousand, I mean they've been absolutely butchered. Okay, absolutely butchered the Italian banking sector. So certainly uh, down almost one, well almost sixty-six uh, percent. Uh, the daily chart of the banking sector, you can see that we've been diving. Okay, ever since last week. That's one of the reasons why I was uh, constantly biased on the U.S. markets, and um, those that were questioning my uh, bearish biases are solely due to this. Uh, one of the main reasons. Okay, so one of the main reasons was was due to this. Okay, so uh, looking at potentially diving down to seventy two forty seven thousand. So uh, banking sector certainly uh, hurting. Okay, Italian banking sector, and therefore that would be interpreted as being risk off. Okay. So certainly would be interpreted as being risk. Okay, the next chart I want to look at is a FTSE MIB. Uh, let's just bring this up here as well. FTSE MIB certainly under pressure. And looking at a weekly chart, you can see it's certainly been butchered along with the uh, Italian banking uh, system. Daily chart, you can see we've constantly been moving lower again. Uh, another reason why my bias has been bearish. But we are now coming into potential support in the FTSE MIB. So just bear that in mind. Don't get overtly bearish, okay, folks? So 60-minute chart, you can see that there is some support in this zone, okay? So again... The Italian referendum certainly is uh, is the main theme this morning if, uh, in the European session. And we have the potential HNS formation on the French CAC and the German DAX. That's potentially in play as well. 
So just bear that in mind, okay? Those two factors are very, very important in terms of the next direction of global markets, okay? Uh, my thesis or my theory last week was that the, uh, the actual weakness in um, Italy and France as well, given the fact that Mr. Philon or Philon basically has uh, has beaten Mr. Juppe and really is a lead contender now versus uh, Marine Le Pen, who is the fanatic, and basically um, the uncertainty surrounding that. Now, if Miss Marine Le Pen were to win, then you have Brexit that's going to be uh, basically uh, uh, cast into motion. Basically, it's going to be thrust into motion, okay, and you are going to see even further um, instability, a weaker euro, etc. And obviously, equity markets uh, are certainly going into a risk aversion mode and thereby sending US markets into a frenzy as well. So all these factors are very, very important. Now, from a fundamental perspective, when you have political uncertainty, that isn't good news, okay? It's very negative and very bearish news, and therefore one needs to take that into a, into account, okay? So again, FTSE mid potentially finding support. If we, if we do break this low then, folks, it certainly is very bearish on daily chart. It certainly is very bearish given the fear and uncertainty, then you are going to get, get a thousand point flush on the FTSE mid, and therefore that will send all European indices lower as well, skidding lower, very sharply lower. So again, bear that in mind, okay? Those factors are very, very important in terms of the next movement in European indices, and that's why you're seeing weakness in European session this morning, okay? Uh, in terms of other economic data, really, I mean, it's OPEC in Italy this morning, really, or, or, or all in all. We have had some economic data released at 10 o'clock, but again, is the market really focusing on that data? Not really, it's more about OPEC and... Uh, and the Italian bank concerns. We are focusing or awaiting Mr. Draghi. Draghi's speech is at 2 p.m. Currently is approaching 12 now. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Mr. Draghi will also dictate things as well. Okay, now let's look at the actual technical picture here. Now let's bring up the German DAX daily chart. We, we already know it's all bearish. Of We've been struggling below 10,800 for some time now with Italy and French political uncertainty in the background. We currently have this HNS formation, the German DAX, which I've highlighted all last week. Okay and looking for weakness given the fact that we are making lower highs but not lower lows now we have made a lower low today so just bear that in mind okay so you've made certainly made a lower low today so therefore looking for a um, a lower high given the fact that we put one here and now looking for a lower low so if we do flush then the next potential level on the german dax is at 10 80 bear that in mind and it will be a violent sell-off as well it, it basically won't be a uh, a, a slow and steady sell-off it'll be quite a violent sell-off and with regards to the german dax we've certainly held that pivot s3 support although we have actually moved lower at one time okay now we're, we've certainly broken that key support there we've certainly uh, broken key support here at 10.595 we've flushed even lower i mean the next potential support really is is uh, is down here okay which is at 10.576 so we're testing the potential double bottom scenario here now on the german dax okay we've got an unfilled gap left above there's no real catalyst to close that gap, okay, uh, from my perspective. You've got the euro now below, well, back at 1.06 again, but the euro really isn't acting as a stimulus now. It's acting more of a risk barometer. So with the euro going lower, it basically increases the concerns of the eurozone breakup, okay? So again, remember the time when all those yields were spiking and uh, all these um, European nations were indebted and bond yields were, were basically uh, volatile, and um, again, it certainly seems to be that phase again with a weaker euro not necessarily meaning a bullish export market. Okay, so bear that in mind. So German DAX again testing, retesting the, the support at 10,580. So we'll see whether it can hold. If it holds, obviously the market is bullish. We are going higher. Okay, so bear that in mind. Let's move on to the uh, the actual French CAC now. The French CAC again, interesting scenario on the daily chart. Held resistance. We've been stuck at resistance for some time now. 60 minute chart. And also, what's important here is that. Even though U.S. markets certainly made and pushed to new highs, the um, the actual uh, European session uh, or European equities certainly have been very, very weak and lagging, okay? So again, take that into consideration. So you clearly see resistance has held around the 4550, 4560 zone. You have double top at 4570, but we've made a low high, okay? We've held the fib 75%, we're making a lower high, and now we have this H&S formation in motion. So the next potential support is at 4475, next one then is uh, 4445, and then you have support at 4400, and the target means at 4430 for the H&S. So from my understanding, is any pop certainly is a showing opportunity, okay, on the French camp, so just bear that in mind, okay? 10 minute chart as well we can certainly look into this and delve into this look at it more accurately let's just see we've certainly held pivot s3 support you have on horizontal resistance here you have an unfilled gap above okay you are potentially retesting if you do retest the double bottom it certainly is a potential buying opportunity 
Uh, although I have made my plus 77 points for the morning, I am calling it a day. But um, always um, tempted to uh, enter if there's a good risk reward opportunity. Okay. Uh, in terms of the FTSE 100, let's quickly bring that up for you folks. Okay. Daily chart, the FTSE remains weak still, given the fact that we had a topping tail with the budget. That was the budget topping tail. Let me just put that in there. Okay. Failed budget or budget failed to live up to expectations topping tail. Failed budget. Okay. So all the euphoria, etc., about fiscal stimulus and blah, 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 blah. Again, failed. Okay. So really didn't materialize. We held a FIB 61%. And we've been flushing ever since. Okay. So daily chart remains weak. A uh, 60 minute chart on the FTSE, obviously you can see we've held resistance at 6850. If we do break high, there is resistance at 6880, but that hasn't transpired. Okay, we had this key diagonal trend line, which really has failed to hold. Um, there was faith in this potentially holding. Um, you've got this support here. There's one trend line here. Okay, the next one is this one here. Okay, and this is the one that's broken. So from my perspective, you are looking at negating this one now, and we're adhering to this one. Okay, so connecting the low here. And you're certainly getting the low here as well. Okay, so again, FTSE 100. If we do come back and retest this diagonal trend line, horizontal support at 6770, really, from my perspective, is a buying opportunity. Okay, certainly will be a potential buy zone. Now, if the SP breaks that 2244, starts to move lower below 2200, then obviously the uh, that trade certainly is off. Okay, but for now, support seen at 6780, 6770 on the FTSE 100, and resistance at 6850, 6840. 10 minute chart, you've certainly retraced quite a substantial amount here, taking the pivot high, take it to the pivot low. You obviously held FIB 75%, okay? You held previous support equals resistance, and then we started to flush. So you are looking at risk off, okay? Risk off for the FTSE 100. Again, you're back into that pivot S3 support. You do have horizontal support in this zone, so bear that in mind. If that cracks, then you have support below at 6.780 and 6.770. So again, interesting scenario, interesting turn of events, interesting uh, potential outcomes as well. Okay, so just again, adhere to your strategy, folks. Okay, support and resistance is universal. Anybody can tell you, even I can tell you support, anybody can tell you support and resistance. But again, it's about your strategy. Do you incorporate fundamentals into it? Do you incorporate intermarket analysis into it? Do you incorporate stochastics, RSIs, MACDs, etc.? What is your buy signal? Okay, is this a buy signal for you at this current juncture? Okay, is it is it oil? Do you confirm it? Do you reaffirm and confirm with oil? I mean, again. Adhere to your trading strategy, okay? If you are going to trade this trade with horizontal support here, okay? Uh, if you use your Fibonacci retracement, that was a good... The short sell there was certainly... I mean, I was tempted to take the short, but I sat out. I'm, I'm calling it a day. But from, from this perspective here, you're looking at a Fib retracement of 75%. If we get back to 75%, given the fact that we've got a thrust higher on potential news of Saudi, if I just bring up the latest news for you folks, why we had this thrust on the FTSE 100... Uh, the Saudis have prov certainly proposed a 4.5% cut, um, uh, uh, and uh, so sources, FT, Financial Times sources, Saudi Arabia has offered to cut 4.5% from production levels of 10.5 million, uh, obviously barrels per dollar. Excuse me, barrels per dollar. So again, they want the Iranians to do that too. Okay, in turn, Iran must freeze production around 3.8 million barrels per dollar. So again. They want to. Uh, they want the Iranians on board as well, and that certainly doesn't seem to be happening at this current juncture. Okay, given the uh, differences. So, again, how will it transpire? How will it play out? As a trader, you're 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 basically kidnapped on ransom by news. Okay, you're dictated by news, regardless of how you how much you want to say that news has no bearing on the market and it's all about technicals and so on and so forth. That's not true, okay? That Japanese candle or that potential pivot or that potential support level or that potential indicator will only work or will basically be dictated to by news, okay? So if the Iranians agree, you're going, you're looking at one hell of a short squeeze and a move higher. It doesn't care. What, it doesn't matter what the candles have to say. It doesn't matter what the indicator says. It's irrelevant, okay? It's fundamental news that's driving the market. If you want to deny that, it's fine. Uh, it's okay. I mean, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be a successful trader. You just continue to trade, adhere to your strategy. Maybe you'll be stopped out on that occasion and then focus on your next trade sell. Okay, but at this current juncture, it certainly has been driven by OPEC. Also, obviously, Italian bank concerns as well. They certainly remain the center uh, centerpiece as well uh, in terms of uh, the market going forward, especially with the Montepaschi who certainly halted as well today, down 15%. Okay, so that certainly seems to be the scenario. Again, looking for support here at uh, the FTSE at 6790, 6780, 6770. Okay, they are the zones. Bring up the Euro stocks as well for you quickly, folks. This video is getting very long now. 
Uh, like I said, I haven't even touched upon some. I mean, I've only touched on one percent of the variables. And there's so many other variables I could bring into this, but I have to keep these videos short so you actually continue to watch them. Okay, so HNS formation on the euro stocks again. This is something that I highlighted last week. My bias was bearish based on this pattern. When you have DAX, CAC, and the euro stocks all with the HNS formation, what are you supposed to uh, conclude? Yes, bias bearish. Okay. And that's projected onto global markets. But global markets were distorted, whether you want to call it light volume due to Thanksgiving, whether you think this Trump rally rally is insane and it's continuing regardless. It's irrelevant, okay? It's continuing. You just have to adjust. Stop loss hit, okay? Focus on your next potential trade setup and next trade idea. Okay, on that note, I uh, wish you uh, success for the rest of the trading session. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of that bonus. Goodbye now.